He was a painter with an intensity that could only come from someone who had seen too much of both beauty and darkness. Born into a world that was already shifting, he spent his early years near the sea in a small, rugged village. The harsh salt of the air and the silent horizon marked him deeply. As a young man, he found himself drawn to the art of visionaries, figures who painted the world not as it was, but as it might be in a fevered dream. But even then, he was too restless, too skeptical to stay in any one movement for long. In his youth, the world of futurism and radical change swept over artists like a wave, promising them a break from the old ways, a rebellion against tradition. He stepped into that current but didn't stay, something in him longed not for a chaotic future, but for a return to balance, to the depths of classic beauty. He wanted lines that were clear, forms that were honest, beauty that didn't need to shout. This was a journey back to order, but it was never simple. He was too fiercely independent to align with any single group, choosing instead a path that was solely his own. In time, he crafted a style unique and haunting, a style that brought solidity to dreams. His forms were compact, his lines precise. He painted like someone with a secret, like someone who saw the world with an unflinching gaze. His subjects seemed caught in a twilight space, somewhere between reality and something almost magical, a reality stripped of illusions yet imbued with a strange, quiet intensity. The beauty he created had a cold purity to it, as if distilled from the world's raw and unforgiving edges. When he entered the Biennale, he took on a new name, a name drawn from his childhood by the sea, from the village that was his first home. It was a name that spoke of his independence, his wildness. Though his fellow artists saw his genius, critics looked upon his work with a wary eye. They didn't understand him, they couldn't fit him neatly into their boxes, and he would not let them. He was known for his fierce resistance to conformity, refusing to align with movements and manifestos, shunning the demands of the time. Even when others bowed to the rising powers, he resisted, refusing any association with the regime, rejecting their ideals, their morals. But this resistance was more than a choice. It was something that grew in him, something visceral and unyielding. He created art that echoed his defiance. Once, he submitted a painting so raw, so sharply critical of the society around him, that it was rejected outright. It was a piece that dared to look at decadence, to expose the corruption that others tried to ignore. And in his life, too, he rebelled quietly, yet profoundly, offering shelter to those who needed it, those who fled the dark tides of oppression. His home became a refuge, his soul a quiet light in dangerous times. His life ended young, but he left behind a body of work that held his soul, a soul fierce and unyielding, one that saw beauty in truth and courage in independence. And as long as his art remains, there is a piece of him that continues to breathe, that still watches the world with that same unwavering, piercing gaze.